Welcome to Computational Fluid Dynamics video tutorials. In this video, we will solve the problem analytically first, and then we're going to solve it by using a simulation program to compare the results with each other. Here we have water flowing through a reducer. The entrance velocity is 0.01 meters per second, and the exit pressure is given as atmospheric pressure. We're asked to determine the exit velocity and entrance pressure. With the assumptions of inviscid, incompressible, and steady flow, the Bernoulli equation can be written as shown. The continuity equation provides a second relationship between V1 and V2 if we assume the velocity profiles are uniform. And we said the fluid is incompressible, so rho1 is going to be equal to rho2. By using continuity equation and knowing that the entrance area is 4 times larger than exit area, we can determine V2 as 0.04 meters per second. By recalling Bernoulli equation, we can write P1 plus 1 over 2 rho V1 squared plus gamma Z1 equals to P2 plus 1 over 2 rho V2 squared plus gamma Z2. We know that the pipe is horizontal, so gamma Z1 from the left hand side and gamma Z2 from right hand side are equal to each other, so they're gonna cancel out. P2 is given as atmospheric pressure, so if we use the gauge pressure for calculations, that makes P2 zero. So the equation is gonna become P1 plus 1 over 2 rho V1 squared is gonna be equal 1 over 2 rho V2 squared. Since we've calculated the velocity at point 2 by using continuity equation, the only unknown here is P1. Now we can calculate P1 as 0.74 pascals. We have solved the problem using analytical solutions. Now we want to try to solve it using a computer program. For the simulations, we're using the student version of the commercial code Fluent in NSYS Workbench. You can reach it from NSYS folder. To run the program, double click on it and you'll see a small new tab in the middle of the page. That tab shows us the steps we should follow. In the first step, we create the problem geometry and we have two options to do it, base claim and design modeler. We'll be using design modeler in our tutorials. First thing we're going to do is to select a plane and start sketching as shown. Since the geometry is simple, all we have to do is to sketch the axisymmetric slice and revolve it about the pipe's central axis.
Be aware that this geometry is not the pipe itself, but the volume that the fluid flows. Now we're done with the geometry, so go back to our workbench initial page. Let's check if the geometry step has a green check on the right side of it. If not, you can right click and update. Now move on to the next step, meshing. In this step, we will divide the geometry into small volumes and for each small volume, we will obtain a velocity vector and a pressure once we complete the simulation. Double click on project on this new window and this will call our geometry we've created on the previous step. Select model geometry solid and click on generate match from the top of the page. Now we've divided the geometry into small pieces. You can see them by clicking on mesh as shown. Now select the lateral surface except the inlet and outlet surfaces. Right click and select Create name selection and name the surface wall. Follow the same steps for inlet and outlet surfaces. The mesh seems okay, but there will be times we should also edit the size or the number of these tiny elements. But for the specific problem, that doesn't seem necessary. We will discuss the details and give an example in the next video. If you want to see how many nodes we have, you can easily check it from statistics. Don't forget to update your mesh, but if you do, you can also update it from the initial workbench screen. Let's move on to the next step, setup. Double click on it and without changing the settings, click OK on the notification window. On this step, we will set the assumptions we made for this problem, which are steady state, invasive and incompressible fluid flow. These assumptions are very important for us to solve the problem because we'll define almost everything about the fluid by these assumptions. First thing we should do is to check the general mesh. Be aware that you get the done message from console. Now move on to models, viscous and change the viscous model into invisible. After this, click on materials, fluid, new to add or material, water. You can enter the properties of the fluid directly or use fluent database to find the material you want to use. Move on to cell zone conditions and change your material from air to water liquid. From the reference frame tab, enter zero to the Z component of the rotation axis direction.
Now it's time to define our boundary conditions. Our entrance velocity is given as 0.01 meters per second for this example. So, click on inlet and change the velocity magnitude to 0.01 meters per second. Exit pressure is given as atmospheric pressure, so click on outlet and check if the gauge pressure is zero. Now we're done with the setup part. We defined the properties, set the assumptions, and applied boundary conditions to our geometry. Everything is set to examine the flow inside the pipe, so we can move on to the solution step. Move to the initialization part and select the standard initialization. Define x, y, and z velocities and gauge pressure as zero. Now we assigned all the small volumes we have created on the meshing step a velocity and a pressure value. These are obviously wrong at this point, but this is just an initial guess which we will eventually converge to the correct solution. Move on to run calculation and enter the number of iterations. Click on calculate and wait for the answer. We got a floating point exception error from the program. It's because we defined our initial velocity and pressure as zero. So let's go back to initialization and change x velocity to 0.01 meters per second and click initialize. Now let's try again to run the calculation and see if it works. We got a notification which says the calculation is complete, so everything went well. If you pay attention to iterations, you can see that the solution stops at the 78th iteration. It is because the solution is converged and now it is in a 0.1% error tolerance for all variables. To display the results, we should click on results, graphic and vectors. When you click on Save Display button at the bottom of the tab, you will see the vectors of velocity. The colors represent the magnitude of these velocity vectors and it gets larger from blue to red. Now we want to see numbers rather than a colored simulation. To do this, we must go Reports Surface Integrals and change the report type to Area Weighted Average. We want to find the exit velocity, so we should select the field variable as velocity and surface as outlet. When we click on Compute, the program will show us the outlet velocity of the fluid. We can follow the same steps to find the inlet pressure.
The small difference between analytical result and the program's result is caused by the number of iterations. When we use simulation programs like this, it only gives us an approximate solution rather than an exact one, so it is more reliable to make an analytical solution than using a program. But when the system is too complicated to make a direct solution, which is the general case in engineering, we use simulation codes. Since there's a neglectable error between these two results, we assume that the solution is correct.